Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is Real Honest to Goodness Motion Blur in Adobe Premiere Pro. Right off the bat, I'm going to let you know that I 17 and a half years at Adobe Systems and I had no idea you could do this. Jarl Leopold at PremierPro.net posted this and he's a buddy of mine and uh, I had to, to ask him, are you serious about that? And I had a look and sure enough, and he's been using this for years and I'll show you how we do this, very, very simple. But it's really important to understand that Jarl has a ton of great stuff for you to learn uh, at PremierPro.net. So go on to his site, after watching this tutorial, have a look at some of the wonderful things that he has going on in there. He's got a bunch of presets going on. He talks about uh, dual audio sound. He's got Premiere Pro driven After Effects templates. I mean, holy smokes, the guy is on fire. And actually he was very surprised that uh, I didn't know this. Well, I did not know this. So here's the idea. The way that motion blur works, and normally we're talking about something like After Effects, is you're emulating what happens when something moves really fast in front of a camera and the shutter can't pick everything up, so it's blurring between frames. And that's just that's a, a setting you can turn on and off in After Effects. Now in Premiere Pro, there's also motion, position, rotation, all of those things going on, but they don't create motion blur. You need to use the transform um, effect and change one setting. Let's have a look. So here I've got two balls with my kind of crappy animation of them bouncing. And as they bounce down, you can see they don't have any motion blur whatsoever. The first one is a sequence that has just a regular keyframes for motion position information. And no matter how fast that thing moves, it's not blurring. The other one and I've placed that same one in here. The other one is actually using transform. So down in your effects, type in transform and it's in the distortion category. So drag that in. And one of the reasons that, that transform was created a long time ago was to change the position of where something happened. By default, because position rotation happened at the top, they will actually affect other things below it like drop shadows and stuff. Instead of a drop shadow sta staying in one place, um, and the object um, moving, well, it moves the drop shadow, which doesn't work. So you can position transform anywhere in the layer stack of uh, effects. So you can see I've got the same kind of position keyframes, and I also have a rotation keyframe. Here's the difference. When you add transform by default, this is checked. Use the composition's shutter angle. And if you turn that off, and change the number. Now look at the ball on the right. It's beginning to motion blur. So as we look at it going along, it's pretty easy to see which one of the balls is got motion blur, has motion blur, and which one looks a little bit more realistic. So then you should start thinking, well, can I use it for things like animation titles? Graphics, absolutely you can. This is the same idea. One is bouncing up and down using transform and the other one is just a regular motion setting. So again, back over here, there's transform, there's the keyframes, and there is use, compens use composition shutter angle turned off and a value of 180. Well, does this also work with scale? Oh yes it does, look at this. As the text scales from 0 to 100, it's got this effect. Now you'll notice over here, I'm actually using a larger value. And if I scrub this value lower all the way to 0, it removes it. So you can control how much of this motion blur is occurring. Look at that. All the way to that. And it's got this big in your face. Boom. Boom. It's kind of hard to see because it's really fast, but it's still a great effect nonetheless. Now, the last one that I wanted to show you was rotate. And if I play this one, you'll see the wheel rotating and you'll notice the hammer going too. I wanted to change this all the way up to 360 to show you that the hammer is really not doing a good job. You can see that there's a bunch of little steps going on in here. Well, for the hammer, I can turn this down 
and then start to introduce a smaller amount of motion blur to where I'm happy. So maybe back to that 180, 150 kind of value. And the wheel just looks fantastic going around here. Total motion blur. All right, there you go. Real natural motion blur directly inside Adobe Premiere Pro. Thanks so much, Jarl. This does change everything for me. I'm gonna turn this on on all my titles and see if it's making a difference, if they're moving fast enough. So make sure you check out premierepro.net. There's a ton of free, uh, free things there, uh, great presets that you can download and, and try out. And he also has a book that's really, really valuable and uh, it's full of, of amazing stuff. You gotta remember, Jarl comes from the world of production. In fact, when I called him this morning ab about this, he had actually just arrived in Helsinki and was off to do some uh, training there uh, with some big broadcasters. So really important stuff at premierpro.net. Buy his book and you'll definitely be well informed, even more informed than I am, obviously, because he has that one uh, up on me and I was very surprised. In fact, one of my other tutorials about the global transform thing that I showed, Sure enough, he already has it in his book. So thanks again to Jarl. Hopefully you found this informative. I know I did. Uh, and, uh, and if you're new to Premiere Pro, if you're new to Premiere, if you're new to, to uh, Video Reveal, take a moment and subscribe. Maybe you're new to Premiere Pro uh, too. If you want to take your support up another level, I'm giddy here because this is just so cool. Join us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Till next time. I'm Colin Smith, and I'm listening to Jarl Leerpold to get our motion blur looking the best it can.